Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about defending as black against the Rai Lopez, or probably the Rui Lopez, if I know anything Spanish about Spanish, which I don't. The Rai Lopez opening, uh, sometimes called the Spanish game, uh, looks like this, as you see on the screen. And uh, actually there are lots of defences you can pick up um, against the Rai Lopez. Uh, there's plenty of very solid ones um, that begin with A6. Um, there are some pretty hairy ones that begin with A6, the best known of which is the Martial Attack, or the Martial Gambit, um, which continues uh, Bishop to A4, <coughs> and now Knight F6, Castles, Bishop E7, uh, Rook E1, and now B5, Bishop B3, Castles, and then if White now chooses C3, you can play d5, and the idea is uh, white might uh, swap on d5 and then take the pawn on e5. The uh, rook gets dragged into the middle, and now uh, c6 is the move. <coughs> Bishop to d6 is in the post, <coughs> and uh, black's within two moves of. Uh, connecting the rooks and most of white's pieces are on the queen side still in bed and uh, for a pawn you get a bit of an attack and uh, I'll watch this uh, closely in 2004 when Vladimir Kramnik played against uh, Peter Leko from uh, Hungary and uh, lost, the, lost the first game in this uh, as white so it's still it's a fair gambit. It can work at grandmaster level. It's it's ferociously complicated. It's ferociously theory driven, and you know there are whole books based on uh, written just about this this one line. And I think you've seen actually it starts on move eight, and you kind of need white to play eight moves, the right eight moves before you get to it. So I don't think it's a very practical um, defence to the Rai Lopez, uh, and or at least it's not a complete defence to the Rai Lopez especially for youngsters when you can't really rely on your opponent knowing the Rai Lopez any deeper than uh, Bishop B5 on move 3. Um, so I'll just show you some other defences. I'm going to recommend uh, the Schliemann Gambit, which I'll show you in a second, but uh, you're welcome to have a look at some others. Um, I mean, I've always been quite fond of something solid like uh, um, the classical defence with um, bishop to c5, or actually probably a better move order for that, is knight f6 first, castles and bishop to c5, I think that's solid enough. And I've always been quite keen on the the, the, the Cozio defence, and uh, uh, that sort of knocks out with some of quite simple ideas of hacking the knight on c6. It's not essential to defend the knight on c6, you've seen this uh, um, this a6 move, um, and you think, well, perhaps this is going to lose the pawn on e5. Uh, it doesn't, in fact. I mean, let's let's just say if it was white's go in this position, and uh, we'll miss out a move by uh, black altogether. And if uh, white now takes on c6, uh, black takes back. And white takes the e pawn. Well, actually, there's an awful lot of stuff going loose at the moment. There's uh, the knights and the pawn are both undefended. The uh, pawn on g2 is undefended, and so if you're keen to get your pawn back in a hurry, you can either play uh, queen to g5, which forks the knight and the pawn. You have to win one of them back, or better, because uh, it picks up the central pawn, uh, queen to d4. Um, picking up either knight or pawn, so we pick up the central pawn. So that's if white, if black does nothing at all on move three. So you've got a kind of free move to decide how you want to set things up. Um, it's so white doesn't threaten the e pawn yet. It may turn out to be a threat, and uh, uh, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's it's a slower opening than perhaps we're sometimes used to when playing junior games. So you've got a free move to decide what you want to do, and I'm going to suggest you play f5. This is the Schliemann Gambit. A um, little bit risky. Great way to play for a win, and uh, I imagine if white plays perfectly, they can get a small advantage against the Schliemann Gambit. But I reckon if white plays perfectly, they can get a small advantage against most things. 
and uh, it, so it's quite fun. It's likely to give your opponent the sort of game they don't want where they're being pressured or they're under attack and uh, see how you go on with it. Um, I mean some youngsters just take everything that they're offered and so the first move to look at I guess is e takes um, f5 and uh, I think you just push on with the e pawn give that pawn a bit of grief give that knight a bit of grief rather queen e2 um, just to stop you taking the knight queen e7 that's not kind to your bishop but it's the best move and uh, <coughs> and now the, the analysis goes takes on c6 takes on c6 knight d4 queen e5 um, again a little fork of uh, knight and uh, pawn knight to f3 and now uh, uh, queen takes f5 I'm actually dropping back the queen to um, e7 is uh, is also played and is about equal queen takes f5 offering up the e pawn this time uh, knight c6 knight f6 d3 bishop b4 knight d2 castles now knight d e4 and white's got the got a pawn again but again we we I mean, this is this is a, 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 a quite a, quite a position that i think you'd, you should look forward to playing if you're black you've got two bishops in an open position you're one move away from connecting your rooks <coughs> and uh, uh, white's two moves away and you've got lots of open lines um, to attack down if you want so uh, after knight d4 uh, queen g6 hitting the g-pawn castles bishop to h3 and now uh, f3 rook a8 and you've just got lots of activity for your for your pawn and uh, i hope this is the sort of position you uh, look forward to playing if not then the shame and glad it's not right for you but uh, um, that's the this is the sort of position I think you might get into fairly often and white just needs to be uh, rather careful here and uh, uh, being a pawn down isn't the worst fight in the world so that's that's one main line um, a s an another typical reaction from youngsters is to play um, this d3 move um, which is solid but no real way to, do to refute the black's idea. Uh, takes takes, so black's got an extra central pawn. Knight f6 castles, bishop to c5, and uh, well, not too many problems here. Uh, knight c3. There is perhaps a little trick here that sometimes works for white. If you play uh, <coughs> queen to e2, there's a little trap which, if you castle as black, um, then uh, Queen to c4 check is going to pick up your loose bishop. So uh, um, if you follow up bishop c5 with d3, so knight c3, uh, d6 rather than d3, and now um, bishop e3. If white is allowed to take on c5, your pawns are a mess, and this pawn on e5 will be weak. So drop the bishop back as the, is the right approach. And if white wants to take it, you'll get an open a file. Knight d5, castles, bishop g5, bishop e6, queen d3. Very sensible developing moves by both players. And now king e8, takes, takes, um, knight to h4, and knight to d4. And this is, you know, a little bit messy, about equal. Um, you've got a threat of, uh, if it's some sort of threat of playing c6, which will force white to take the pawn on uh, uh, to take the bishop on b6 and it's about an equal game i don't see that this is a, a great worry for black so those are the most obvious moves let's look at some less obvious moves uh, <coughs> d4 might be a a, a, a try for white um, just sort of banging into the middle there full pelt um, not the best move against the schleman um, takes on e4 takes on e5 take twice and now c6 and uh, <coughs> if uh, white moves the bishop you play a queen check onto uh, a5 and that will pick up the e pawn actually what white no normally does in this position if they've um, heading for it deliberately is to sacrifice the bishop so knight, knight c3 or something um, 
takes on b5, takes on e4, and now black pawns are a mess and you're a bit behind in development. Uh, d5, giving up another pawn, but trying to get your development sorted. e takes d d6, uh, knight f6, queen d4, and uh, you know white's got some compensation for the piece, but it's but it's a piece. Um, and if you're that fussed about it, you can always throw the piece back at white. Um, <coughs> provided you get a couple of pawns for it, so I think this is this is very uh, playable for very playable for black, and I don't think white would uh, enter that happily. So of the other responses to the Schliemann gambit, <coughs> um, instead of uh, the ones we've looked at, um, the main line actually is to play knight to c3, um, and uh, we'll play. F takes e4, knight takes e4. Now white's got plenty of development, and uh, there's a. Uh, I'm going to recommend you you don't play them the big main line of the Schliemann. There's a instead we'll play Tartakova's variation, which is knight to c6. I'll just show you the other one in case you fancy it because uh, it's worth a look. Um, if instead of knight f6 we poke the knight with d5. Um, now if uh, black retreats, uh, uh, sorry if white retreats then uh, black's probably got what they want so knight takes e5 ganging up on the knight um, if we take the offered knight, knight takes c6 and of course if we take now on c6 there'll be a, uh, a fork of the king and the rook on c6 so uh, the usual move is to play queen to g5 um, which forks the bishop and g pawn, <coughs> so that if the knight retreats um, with a discovered check, there's not a lot in it for <coughs> white necessarily. Uh, queen to e2 by um, white now, and uh, well, goodness me, what will we do? Uh, knight f6 is uh, fair enough, and, there, and then the best line for white, although it's not obvious, is to play f4 giving uh, giving up a pawn um, but the idea is after queen takes f4 then white gets in um, to gets to play the uh, d4 move with uh, uh, with a tempo um, you probably don't do it quite do it immediately um, but so d4 but that's that's the idea behind sacrificing the the pawn instead of playing d4 you've got knight e5 check and knight a7 check for white and uh, anyhow there's a lot of theory on it, it's all quite complicated and people are trying to make improvements in the theory on move 20 or something so I don't think this is very practical. So <coughs> what else can we do for um, white, uh, sorry for, for black, so after knight takes e4, knight to, uh, knight to f6 I think is fine and uh, now white's got some more possibilities uh, either play queen e2 or knight takes f6 the two main lines so we'll look at knight takes f6 queen takes f6 and now castles <coughs> quite a lot of things are okay here uh, we'll try uh, bishop to e7 and white usually takes on uh, c6 and you can take either way d, d takes c6 or b takes c6 um, is fine um, or after castles there's a funny move uh, knight to d4 so you want to, so the bishop looks a bit silly stuck out there on b5 so there's some possibilities after <coughs> takes uh, on f6 and castles instead of castling queen e2 is a, a move again bishop e7 and takes on c6 is the main line and uh, well the, the, uh, the, the main line used to be and I was about to recommend uh, d takes c6 um, and white takes on e5, bishop f5, d3 sort of sensible moves by most, both sides and uh, and you just win your pawn back on e5 I think with a with an equal gain, <coughs> but uh, I think after bishop takes c6, if you take back with a b pawn, and now knight takes e5, 
the old move used to be queen to e6 and trying to make something in an end game. But the uh, the strongest player, human player in the world is obviously Magnus Carlsen. The strongest computer player in the world at the moment seems to be a thing called Alpha Zero. And Alpha Zero reckons you should play uh, uh, B takes C6 and after Knight takes E5, uh, Bishop B7 and Castle's queenside. Um, so again you've got two bishops, you've got open lines, you've got a bit of development and uh, get stuck in. So that's the um, that's the line with takes on um, after knight f6 takes on f6. Instead of that uh, perhaps a more subtle move queen e2 uh, by white and uh, we'll play d5 and now we can get into a version of the line we just looked at, the, the big main line, with knight takes e5 um, but uh, takes on e4 takes on c6 and uh, here I think actually you just let, let white do what they want to do um, takes on at b6, takes on, uh, takes on c6, takes on c6, bishop d7 takes and takes and you've got uh, you, you've lost an exchange but again you've got uh, lots of development two bishops and these rooks if white's very proud of having won the exchange these rooks are going to take a long long while to get into the game so I think you could uh, you could play this uh, quite happily and I'll put some uh, details in the notes um, so instead of uh, uh, taking on e5 after d5, white will play perhaps uh, knight takes f6 again and uh, this time we don't want to take with the queen because the e-pawn will drop so we'll take with the pawn and now this is perhaps the best, best line for white d4 and uh, trying to make us regret our rather strange setup so bishop g7 takes an e5 and now we'll we'll leave that, carry on with the development with castles, definitely the best move and if takes and takes um, then uh, you know again we've got two bishops, got a bit of um, development we look forward to playing the game e6 is probably the best idea here, trying to make a nuisance rook e8 castles and now again the main line I thought was going to be uh, rook takes e6 and you'll get some space and some activity to make up for the missing g-pawn but uh, I think c5 straight away is probably better um, and there's a main line if this can be said to have a main line uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, now with queen to b5 which is an interesting move um, instead of queen to b5 knight h4 has been tried just take the pawn rook d1 has been tried and then queen to d6 I think is the right move bishop to f4 and again just take the pawn and uh, these are all you know fair fighting chances for for black um, so queen b5 is the sharp line trying to make a nuisance of themselves on that c pawn and so we uh, with regret play bishop to f8 although it might have a better future somewhere else on the board bishop to e3 again he's in that uh, c pawn and this time we take the E pawn with rook to rook takes to e6, and if now uh, bishop takes c5, uh, we'll play bishop a6, which is protected by the rook, winning the exchange. So white doesn't want to take the c pawn just yet with bishop takes a6. So rook f d1, c6, uh, queen a4, queen e8, and uh, c3 a5, and we'll follow a game. <coughs> this was played between uh, a chap called Mista as white and Azarov as black, both uh, strong grandmasters, 2500 plus ELO rating. Uh, rookie 1, rookie 4, queen a3, funny looking move, and now bishop to g4. Um, and the game blundered on. Uh, knight d2, rookie 6, queen a4. And now queen to g6, and giving the white king a hard stare. Knight f1, h5, ready or not, here we come. Bishop f4, rook a e8. 
and uh, provoking an exchange takes and takes and now uh, bishop to g3 by white trying to cover the uh, king bishop to e2 uh, queen takes a5 queen to c2 getting in the guts of the white position queen b6 hoping to snuffle some pawns maybe and now uh, bishop to b5 cutting off the queen's interfering as we say uh, with the queen's defense of the b2 pawn and uh, if uh, well I mean you're not going to get this far in a game are you but uh, as it happens white I think went wrong here with uh, c4 and then uh, black um, should have played uh, queen takes b2 here and uh, there's some analysis by junior tay uh, that shows an advantage to black in all variations now but anyhow there's a, a possibility of how the game might go so uh, Schliemann defense I think is the best way to um, start off with defending against the Rhino fans it gives you the sort of game that you might enjoy a bit better than the slow old uh, grind you get with the Rye Lopez. So, I think David Bronstein said uh, when you play the Rye Lopez it's like milking a cow. Very slow, patient, pulling away at it and hoping you're getting, getting to get a bucket full at the end. Um, so we want to play a much more uh, open and exciting and a tactical game and uh, put White off their stride a bit. And I think the Schliemann's a fair way to do that. Um, so after D4 um, we take on E4 after e5, the e, e takes f5, we play e4. After d3, we take on e4. And after knight to c3, we're going to take on e4 and not play d5, unless you've done a bit of study first. But knight to f6. And if white takes, you take with a queen. And if they play queen e2, well, we'll chase that away with d5. Um, and now, if they take on e5, um, we take the free piece. And now, if uh, uh, takes on c6, we'll let them take the exchange. And if after d5, knight takes f6, remember to take with the pawn this time. And if d4, bishop d7, bishop g7 rather. If they take on e5, castles, and that's probably about as much as you need to remember. Uh, white players aren't going to know this ever so well at junior level, and if they start to learn some theory, well, that's the time to learn some theory. So I hope you have a good time with the Schliemann defence, and uh, see you next time.